Hi guys, uh, good afternoon. It is the 20th, Sunday the 20th of September. Hope we're well, had a good week, looking forward to the next one. It's good to be back. Uh, we'll start with the usual, sort of going through the products one by one, looking at some levels uh, for the week ahead that could come into play and what could happen if they are to break or, or hold or, or whatnot. Any questions as usual guys, just, just get them in the uh, the comment section below and I'll, I'll do my best to, to get back to those throughout the day. Uh, Euro here, um, it, it's set up quite nicely, I think, for a bigger move to happen. But I think we also need to take into consideration that a big move hasn't happened for quite some time. I mean, this range, if we talk about arriving in that at the end of July, we're coming to the end of September and we're pretty much exactly there. Uh, so where am I looking at for uh, a decent move to occur? Well, we've got this trend line. If you watched the, the FOMC on uh, the interest rate decision on Wednesday, we were talking about this trend line here, weren't we? Which obviously hadn't been touched yet, but you can see it did on Thursday. Uh, so that has to go, you know, that has to go. Also, you would you would argue that the, uh, the sort of 117 handle has to be broken as well for a considerable move lower. Uh, so it's a bit of a zone uh, and just be aware of the whole sort of false break. But if you get to get a daily close below the trend line, daily close below the what sort of 117, I think you then get 115 again. So that would be a potential trade for all of those dollar uh, lovers out there on the flip side where it's we failed to break the trend line we pushed higher where could we then see another high for the year for me if uh, if someone isn't already in that trade it would be if we can get above sort of the 11920s the high that we had back on the 10th of september and also the 15th of september so those would be the two trades that i'll be looking at this week long uh, above the the sort of last week's high back towards the 120 or a short below the trend line and whether it can get below the 170 or not we'll have to wait and see uh, but towards the uh, 115 handle so I think it's set up quite nicely to be honest the euro I wouldn't want to be on Sunday's open clicking into a trade I'd be waiting to see how it develops but that's how I would would have that euro up there let's just have a quick look to see if we want to put on any moving averages uh, as well. I know the, the pound's got one of interest. Let's have a quick look. If we're near anything, the 100, obviously not very close. 50, okay, 50 day. It's worth having on, I would say. Just gives me more reason to want to go short below the trend line, to be honest. So looking at that euro there, just being aware. On the uh, weekly chart as well, we're still above this trend line uh, that broke from the high that we had back in uh, 2008 uh, you can see we have broken through that as well so and, and or still finding support after the breakthrough I should say so a break of all of that uh, and you might well see that unwind at the moment it's not ready to go just yet uh, and uh, keep an eye out on on comments from the ECB of course you know we you had the the lane comments around that 120 but then obviously the ECB uh, on the on that day anyway spiked higher they sort of contradicted those comments about you know they are looking at the interest at uh, the the currency rate or they're not so any developments there will be worth keeping a watch on moving on to the other dollar pair uh, or the main dollar pair is pound um i i will go long if we close above this whole zone but we can't so it's a short for me right now um and i'm not an advocate of going short at the open but with all this second lockdown talk uh, really gathering pace, I just read an article or a tweet, I should say, from uh, comments from Sadiq Khan saying London should go into a lockdown tomorrow. Uh, so th it's going to gather pace. I mean, that view is ridiculous in my opinion. But anyway, what's the chart telling me? The chart is telling me we've just come uh, back to test a massive area of support as resistance, failed to get above there, failed to get above the 130 handle. Uh, and we're likely, in my opinion now, to push back down to the low of the month. That in itself is a key zone along with um, sort of the 10th of June high. So keep a watch, obviously, on that. It's, it's decision time uh, for, for the Bears. Can they really follow it through? I think if you are sure on the retest of this level, I think the target should be the low of the month with a stop above the 130. 
on the futures. Levels below there, just keep a close watch on these sort of previous highs turn to support. Talking here, the sort of the 9th, uh, 13th of July, the low of the 22nd, and then uh, of those sort of similar days, the lows of those as well coming in around the sort of 126, 125s um, as well. So, yeah, it, it's looking, looking well, if you're short, the pound it's looking it's looking nice all the way we finished it would that have that trend line on no not really uh, let's get the moving average on here because there's been a couple that uh, people have been looking at we'll just do the quick run through you've got the 200 day which uh, is obviously an, an area of support here so a break of that further downside uh, is what I'd be looking for uh, let's have a quick look to see if the 100 is or 50 are, are close enough for anything to be worthwhile okay yeah the hundreds also coming in around that low the 50 uh, is the one that I want to bring into to the question here it's almost like one of these moving averages is going to give way I'll just turn the 50 into a yellow into a yellow one you probably can't quite see that, that clearly now but basically uh, I like the long if we get above, and, and most importantly, daily close above. Uh, I don't mind the short at the open now. Uh, if you wanna, if you prefer getting in a better rent, or, you know, be more patient, more confirmation, I think it's a short below the, 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 the 200 uh, and, the, and these lows as well. So the pound at the moment not looking too good. Um, wouldn't surprise me to see some uh, immediate pressure upon the open, but you know, you you got you got a couple of a uh, couple of good good trades there. The the long, uh, not that I think it's going to happen this week, but you'd be looking for that sort of low, the fourth of September, to come in and some decent other levels, previous highs before you get back to that sort of one thirty five election high from back in December last year. Right now, for the pound, it's not looking good. The euro, interestingly, though, on for you know any dollar strength, is not really having it just yet though. So just bear that in mind. If the euro was to say break 119, you know, part of that reason is going to be dollar weakness, which might also see some risk on come in, which might see people buying the pound, selling the dollar, and actually the pound's downside is limited a touch. But lockdown fears, Brexit talks, it's not looking very good for the pound at the moment. But that said, one, two, three, four days last week uh, were green. So just be steady. But uh, yeah, at the moment, it's, it's definitely a bearish bias. The Aussie looks similar, really, to the Euro, doesn't it? Not too much going on in recent times. Um, I, I'm an advocate here for a short on, on sort of the breaks of, of these similar sort of trend lines here. You know, the Euro, we've got that on, haven't we? Really nice, re really respected. Market's looking at it, uh, or it's just a massive coincidence. I'm preferring the first part of that. So a break of that, I, I like the idea of short targeting the lows of all of that with the main sort of target being the, the high that we had back on the 10th of June. Uh, decent you know, trade there, stop the other side of the trend line is how I'd look at it. And then on the flip side, you can see quite clearly the, the same sort of highs that the euro and the pound have had where they've just not, you've had a very strong ceiling along above there towards the high of the year. So it's set up nicely. Previous lows uh, would be the, the, ta the targets uh, for the short and, and highs for the, the long if we are to get above the the, the first September high just be a, of course aware of these levels going back to July 2018 but on the Aussie it's, it's looking looking quite good um, moving averages 21 day uh, is is relatively well respected in, in in this market as well you can see there's a few like the 50 is a fair bit below the hundred you'd expect that even lower uh, and like well yeah 200 sort of similar so it's not the same really as, as say the pound the euro where i would have the moving averages on uh, for the aussie it doesn't look as as enticing uh dolly yen um decent move decent move last week really sort of uh kicked on to in this case the downside this is you know dolly yen rather than yen dollar um bit of a break i mean you could argue it's a trend line i'd, I'd I think you'd have had to uh, sort of had that on very tight and it, it it wasn't really for me the reason it broke but you can see we've now taken out the the low that we had on uh, the 31st of July a bit of relief here are we going to see some dollar strength this week potentially but on the other on the flip side 
if I think actually equities are likely to come under some pressure, maybe the yen short again to continue down to the lows that we had from sort of March time could well be ones to look at. So just bear in mind a break of the, the low of the month or lower last week or the low of 31st of July, whichever way you want to look at it, you're sort of looking towards now the 12th of March low, 10th of March low, and uh, the Friday before that, the, the 9th of March low as well. On the flip side, where would I uh, not mind uh, a short? And for me, this is the reason why we actually had the break, is just the break of all of this support point. So if we are to get, to get back above the, the 28th of August low, then for me, it's, it's an opportunity to, to get long. That said, it's also, you know, it's a, it's a key decision point. It's a line in the sand. So it's like, it's like with the, the pound um, that we saw, and I'll go back to that in a moment. It's, it's long above, short below. It's like the pound here, short, long. It's like the euro, short, long. It, it's these levels, I think, at the moment, the effects are really, really nice. Something's got to give, and it's not giving right now, except maybe in the pound and the yen. I'm not I'm sure many people saw the yen coming, to be fair, but there's opportunities to, to come there. Um, you know me, I'm, uh, I'm as bullish as they come on equities. Um, I, you know, I, I definitely, you know, am a, am a fan of the, the overall picture being to the upside. Um, so a quick look here on, uh, on the S&P. Not quite sure why the daily chart has that last candle as green. Just because of, I guess the contracts are getting uh, moved together, so it's not going to look as amazing here. You can see here, this is this recent time it did actually, of course, take out that low. It's a bit annoying here, um, but that said, let me just try something. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, how the the S and P finished? I mean, for a bullish point of view, it, it didn't finish below last week's uh, 9th of September low which is good we are pricing in a little bit of a gap down uh, in in us equities below all of this i mean i think there's one more one more area where i'd feel comfortable getting long and that really is that sort of high that we had from the 23rd of july here um below there and a daily close so monday would be the key here where we close i don't think it looks too good to the upside, though, uh, I I'm a I'm a fan of, of getting long above this these highs that we had. You might have seen my tweet on on Wednesday talks about it in the Fed. I think we close above that region uh, and it's all time highs that that come in. I really think it's uh, as simple as that, to be honest. And and that's just the beauty of sometimes letting the market tell you what's going on. You have a view. My case was bullish. Where do I want to get long above thirty four fourteen on on this chart on the daily close? Doesn't happen. I can't get long and. What happens then in the Asian session is the rejection after trying to make that high, we come back down, take the low out, and it's decision time. It really is, isn't it? You know, you you talk about big levels, you've got them on here. Let's have a look at the, the moving averages. You've got the, uh, let's just check the colors just to make sure here. Let's just go back one side. So you've got the blue, red, e, green. So yeah, the 21 day, as we know, has been broken. The 50 finishing below that. Uh, and the 200 a, a fair while down. Um, yeah, so looking at this below 32.73 on a daily close, uh, I think we we would then at least see a test of 31.78, uh, which is you know decent decent move lower. Uh, and then it is again decision point. Uh, there's going to be twists and turns in this market. You know, vaccine rumours. I think were uh, you know someone had a adverse reaction. They don't know whether it's from. The, the vaccine or not, but I think that's weighing on equity to touch and, um, you know, it's not looking too good at the open, but things can change and things can change in an instance. But yeah, below 32.73, I think you get uh, another, well, 100 point uh, move to the downside, actually. Um, but that said, if it stays in this zone, uh, I will get long above 34.14. Uh, towards those highs so yeah we'll have to see how that uh, pans out but those are the levels I'm looking at the um, the Nasdaq it's 50 day moving average we finished of course below there as well it finished pretty much bang on the weekly the previous sort of weekly lows but it doesn't look too good however to the upside it's the same sort of thing you've got your 21 day you've got a really important ceiling you know if you're only interested in going long and you're not long 
you know, get out. Get uh, we'll wait to you know we break breaks above here to to get in. You know, you don't necessarily have to look to to catch that falling knife. Uh, below and like I said, we're we're expecting a a gap down. Obviously, we will take out last week's low, and then you're really looking towards. Uh, let's just bring this in here. You know, a solid area of previous support back from the 27th of July uh, as well. Just be aware, any of these moves do come down. You you know, you are looking at previous all-time highs, which would potentially attract people to get long. I don't personally think it's the start of a massive move lower. I don't, um, but I think we're you know, we're fine to look for some sort of uh, correction. I think Apple finished in uh, a bear market, didn't it? Is that right? But yeah, Nasdaq 12% of the, the highs, 20% for the Nasdaq, back down to 10,000. I'd be surprised if we get 10,000, but I'd like the look of it there, as it stands anyway. Uh, Dow Jones, um, there was a nice trend line on, I believe. I believe, which broke. Um, just got to try and find where exactly it was from now. Hmm. Maybe it's on a different chart. But anyway, that it sort of retested that whole area, didn't it? It's much like the the other US equities. You've got a nice ceiling. I get long above there. You've got a solid area of support here. So keep a watch on that uh, as well. I think it might have been that trend line. Anyway, uh, yeah, solid area of sort of that double top. Remember here from the 15th uh, and 23rd of July. Below there, I, I think the door's open towards, what's that, 26,000. Uh, and then obviously just taking into consideration these other lows, you sort of go back, put it on the daily chart, and, and they really are our targets, I would say. So for me, the long, I'm not looking to catch the, the bottom here for the, the, for the Dow, for the NASDAQ, I'm just surfing the areas. These are the points where I'd feel comfortable getting in long. Other than that, I, I'm, I'm sort of staying away. I, I'm expecting a bit of downside risk uh, to start the week. There's no guarantee, though. There has certainly been... Uh, in these uptrends a lot of the time Monday pushes lower in Asia but it was recovered in in Europe and then into America American session pushes on so daily close on Monday very key so keep an eye on that um, the DAX let's have a quick quick look at the old DAX is it starting to turn that is the question it yeah, is the question a couple of times is failing to get above the the previous high that we had here on the 21st of July Ooh, I mean that it looks toppy. It certainly looks toppy. Um, trend line on, I would say, is is worth having. You know, to start in uh, here on the fifteenth, getting that in, it's nicely respected. A break of that, US equities maybe to lead it and and sell off sharply into the beginning of the week. I think the DAX is likely to follow. Uh, but on the flip side, equities, you know, they, they find a bit of a flaw. I, I do like the idea of a long on the close above thirteen thousand ish. Uh, one, what's that, 313 uh, towards the all-time high. So it's set up nicely. Break of the trend, just look for those previous lows. So here, 4th of September, 21st of August, etc., etc. A uh, nice area of support, 31st of July. I think if you're not in any positions right now, there are some nice nice opportunities. I like the idea of shorts uh, on, on equities. Um, however, Monday close is key. I like the pound short probably at the open. Uh, but if not, um, you've got those points marked up. The euro is, for me, a wait and see. Long above 119, short below the trend line. Aussie, same sort of thing, really, isn't it? Long above, short below. Uh, and the yen, uh, at the moment, if you're not in, I think wait for that decision point or the short below last week. So. Uh, let's have a quick look at, at gold. At gold. Um, yeah, it, 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 I, I, I think I... I'm not sure if I, I tweeted it or not, but I like the idea of both gold and silver longs. I think silver I was looking more towards 26s, uh, which is this sort of region here on a, on a false break, just because of how many times it's been tested. So I'd like price to come below and, and, and go back above. But yeah, for gold, um, you've got this trend line on. It's nicely respected. A close of the day above that, I think we push. To the downside, it's not as clean trend line wise. Um, but I'd use it as a bit of a guide. Decision time is coming. What's going to happen? Is it going to be dollar strength that leads this lower? Is it going to be uh, risk on, uh, risk off that maybe pushes this higher? Decision time, is it? Re look, look, the, the highs are getting lower. The lows are getting higher. Something's got to give. Just be aware of the, the time of the day of the break if you want to get in on the intraday. You'd ideally want it to be 
sort of post gold open 120 uk time before making that decision the the beauty is of course on the break of those you've already got your targets marked up in in the sort of the lows that make that trend line and that's how i'd go with it it's uh, i'm not going to commit to a decision uh, but look if you can give me 1900 uh, on the false break and just what i mean by the false break would be uh, you know price to to take it out to come back above on the on these are daily candles uh, and then look for, for that push to, to continue because i think gold has still got some more upside to come uh, oil um interesting finish on friday i mean the way it finished for me is is a bit of indecision um it doesn't look as good as maybe the, the previous few days are, are suggesting um, so it could be that we just start to see a bit of an, an unwind. I'd forgive you for not wanting to, to get too involved in, in this market just yet though. However, uh, I've always said I like the, the long above 44 towards 50. I'm waiting patiently for that sort of two to one stop below. Um, sort of 42 bucks, uh, I would say for, for the, for the long. Um, so yeah, I, I like it here. However, if we do start seeing unwind, just be aware of, uh, some of these previous areas of what were uh, resistance now to act as support on the way back down. It's right on a decision point, isn't it? Um, so maybe wait to see how you know we, we go over the weekend. If we are to see risk off, you might start to see uh, oil turnover. And if you are to see some dollar strength as well, maybe led by you know the pound under pressure, also sort of you know the flight to quality or the yeah, euro to come back towards this trend line. Oil is not going to like that, and it could obviously come down as well. On the flip side, a bit of risk on equities, brush off any weekend fears. Uh, some comments I'm sure are going to keep coming out of OPEC Plus as they were to the walls the end of last week. They could end up being positive, and we push on. And if we have a week like we did last week, you know, it, it's, it's, it's incredibly bullish to, to look at. Last market, just to, to mention here, uh, I don't necessarily focus on it too much. I actually did have a long in copper, which I, I scratched it. Uh, when I got long here on the retest, just came back and was messy. And these are a number of weeks, so I can't be too annoyed that it's now all the way up here because it would have stopped me up. Uh, but that has pushed on, and you can see it's really uh, sort of you know continuing here to to make that push to, to new highs for the year. So for any copper traders, you're you know looking back towards 2018 levels now. Um, and as long as it stays above that previous high that we had from 2019, I think you're going to have to be happy to, to stay in this one. Uh, and that's where I would sort of trail my stop but below. It looks pretty good for, for now. I guess another level to be aware of closer is the sort of high that we had from the 18th of June 2018 week. That's not a million miles away. So yeah, keep a, a notch, uh, an eye on that. If you're long copper, congratulations. It's looking pretty good. Uh, as usual, guys, any questions, please get them get them in the, uh, the chat below. I'm more than happy to to answer those uh, today. But anyway, guys, hope you all have a, a great rest of your Sunday if you're watching it today or a great uh, week ahead if you're watching tomorrow. Take care, guys.